Okay, so I've gone through and what I've done is I went back to my definition and I created another character definition. Just by pressing plus here, it will create a new empty character definition. And I basically repeated all the steps I just did in the previous video. So, so long as you uh, reset it up again, um, I don't know why I have to do it twice sometimes. It's not always the case that I do, but I have noticed that sometimes uh, I get errors like you saw in the previous video, so it's just as well that that happened. And uh, when I do that, if I already have an existing uh, custom rig that's been set up and, and aligned to a particular um, a character definition, then I get a little a message that pops up and says, do you want to unlock one and, and relock the other? Just click confirm and just allow that to happen. And you'll just go in and you'll create your custom rig um, setup just as you did in the previous video as well. The only difference now is that you'll see that there is the original one that we set up and now there's the second one that we set up. So inside here um, in the custom rig mapping, we'll just wanna change our source now as you'll see that where it was just said none and stance before, now we have character one as an option. Um, surprisingly, character one's an option, whereas character two is not. Again, I'm not entirely sure why. I'm sure that there is actually a proper explanation for this, but, um, and if somebody wants to comment on that in the, uh, in, in the comments below, by all means, please do, so I can be enlightened. Um, but all we need to do here, basically, is just click character one, two, and we won't notice an immediate change, but as we now scrub our timeline, you get to see we have this movement occurring. Now, there are a couple things that I noticed that are a little bit different about this. Like the upper torso seems to be working pretty good, um, but the lower bit there doesn't seem to be working exactly in step, literally. Um, one of the things that is a little bit different here, I just wanna quickly go in and uh, turn this back to IK mode there. Let's just see what happens when we do this now. Now that seems to be working a lot better. Um, I think that's because we were using um, the, we, we remember we'd set this up so that those knees were following our pull vectors um, and the pull vectors are moving. Now, the only thing that's a little bit odd about this is notice that the pull vectors don't entirely follow where the knees are. They sort of do, but not entirely. Um, if we look at our setup here in Human IK, it does map both the translation and rotation, but still it is a bit off. And what we could do in this case is if we take a look at what's been created here um, for those pull vectors, we could effectively uh, just try to push them ahead here a little bit. So if I go into world mode, um, or actually object mode, whichever, either way, um, what I might try to do is to just move them forward. But of course I can't right now because they're being affected by, um, they're being driven by our mapping. So those aren't gonna change, but that's okay because we can change that later. I'm not gonna be too worried about it. Um, if we were doing it with the FK mapping, uh, we would get those nice rotations, but then these these would just sort of stay back here and not really be affected. Um, so ultimately, I kind of like doing it with the IK. So what we can do now is go in, and what we have to do is bake these off, all right? So if we uh, if we go into bake this off here, we have to come into our, um, our options here, and we'll go to bake, and bake to custom rig. And I'm just gonna my, go to my option box there real quick. And we're going to bake uh, below the hierarchy. So um, in fact, let's just see here. We want to take, not just selected, but we'll go from below and let's go grab our root there. Um, and we'll say all keyable channels. And we don't need to worry about driven channels uh, or control points. And we will do our we do our time slider or start end. That's kind of the same thing at the moment. And we are going to bake to, uh, we're gonna bake this to the base animation layer, all right? You could bake it to a new layer, but I just basically keep uh, the base animation layer here. And sample by one, that's fine. Um, pretty much all those options are fine. So we'll just click bake now. And what that does is it takes the mapping that we have here and it actually translates it onto definitive rotations on these joints. So now if I were to look at this, in fact, even if I were to grab this pull vector now, I could move it around. Okay, um, so ultimately what I want to do here in this case is to just apply a little animation layer for these pull vectors, which I can do by coming in here to anim. Um, and let's just grab both pull vectors in question and we will just create a new one. We'll call these 
um, let's give this a name here. We might, we could call it legs, we could call it knees. For now, I'll just call it knees. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just grab my, um, my left pull vector knee here and go into world mode real quick. I'm gonna try to bring this forward so it sits in front of where the knee is supposed to be here for the most part. Um, and uh, keep that there more or less in line. And ultimately, that's pretty good there. If we had a character, if we actually had the geometry on this character, we could better see. But for now, we're just looking at the overall, um, just overall to the joints to keep it nice and simple. And this one here will be the same, right? Okay, um, so what we can do there is just make sure that we go in and um, hit S on both of those to sort of at least lock in our uh, translations there, so key selected. Um, and now see what we get when we do that. And that way they stay nice in front there and they're pretty much in line. If there's a little bit of slipping somewhere, we could always uh, just edit them again in the animation layer. So that's got that nicely placed in there now. And uh, ultimately that pretty much gives us our mapping. The only thing that could be different, of course, is the amount of rotation that we see in the knees. So again, like if you notice where there's, if we watch uh, the Rococo versus the Rapid Rig here, there is a bit of a, um, if we compare the Rapid Rig there, Rapid Rig's at a full extension right now compared to Rococo where the there's still a little bit of a bend in the knee there. So those are things we might want to clean up a little bit using some either animation layers or something. So I could, you know, ultimately perhaps bring, use the um, IK control here to build in a little bit more of a rotation there at that moment. Um, and so there's always going to be a certain degree of cleanup when there is not an exact correspondence between the layout of the joints in the um, in, in the custom rig versus the rig that's coming in from your motion capture software. So there is still a lot of things that you have to do as an animator to just make sure everything looks right. But this definitely gets you very close to um, where you need to be. And it certainly solves the problem of being able to take uh, your motion capture data and apply it to a custom rig. So I hope that this has been of help to you. And uh, good luck uh, working with motion capture.